Hey, Michael with X-Force PC here working on the uh, test bench. Not a pretty thing to look at, but um, we I did a real uh, extensive video where I tested Vulcan performance on a bunch of different graphics cards, and I used an i9 processor because I wanted to eliminate any possibility of CPU bottlenecking. I wanted any bottlenecking to hopefully be thrown to the graphics card. And I did the, you know, the best you can do is use the fastest chip for X-Plane at the time, and that's the i9-9900K. Wanted to do a little different approach here. Wanted to use the fastest graphics card I could find with this one of the slowest processors I had lying around. So this is an Intel i5-2500K. It is technically capable of overclocking. It has the little K designation. But the motherboard I have is a cheap motherboard. doesn't support overclocking. And the max speed uh, memory it would support is DDR3-1333. Um, this happens to be 2400 RAM, but it, again, the max speed the board supports is 2133. The chip is a 3.3 base clock with a 3.7 gigahertz um, turbo, freak, max turbo frequency. So I took I get that again and I matched it up with an $1,100 2080 Ti and tested it with OpenGL and with Vulkan with X-Plane to see, you know, Vulkan is a graphics API. So theoretically, there shouldn't be any advantage in running Vulcan on this system, right? Because the bottleneck isn't the graphics. The graphics are astounding and the chip is slow. But let's find out. So what I did, I ran a single 1080p display, did it on my medium, what I call my medium settings. And um, I can put those up on the screen to remind you what I call medium. And then I ran it, you know, an open OpenGL. I got 34 frames per second, which isn't you know, terrible. It's bad for the 2080 Ti, but it's pretty good, I guess, for the, the 2500 processor, i5-2500K. And then I turned around and ran it on Vulkan, and to my surprise, I got the same kind of performance boost I was seeing on all the other configs, 30 or 40 percent. Sorry about all the jingling. Uh, so I got about a 30 or 40 percent increase up to 46 frames per second when I ran it on Vulkan. So again from 34 to 46. Processor utilization remained about the same between 65 and 75 percent processor utilization both on Vulkan and running OpenGL. So that speaks to the fact that uh, Vulkan is simply just more efficient. It allows for more efficient communication between the graphics card and the processor is the only thing I can think of uh, as to why you still see a performance increase when the CPU is the bottleneck but the API is only for graphics. Now I also ran it on what I call my high settings and I'll put those up on the screen now. We, we bumped the anti-aliasing up a notch and we bump the objects up to extreme, I think is or maximum, whatever the highest one is. Now um, on OpenGL, got 26 frames per second. Now this is over Manhattan, so it's uh, a pretty demanding area, but no weather turned on, no add-ons. 26 frames per second, not all that, that's not very good. You want to stay over 30. Moved to Vulcan, went to 33 frames per second. Again, a 30, 40 or so percent increase in performance uh, by simply changing from OpenGL to Vulkan, and again with the CPU being our bottleneck. Um, one thing I did notice also, the CPU utilization, as I mentioned earlier, between uh, the two APIs, Vulkan and OpenGL, remained about the same. On the high, it ranged between about 65 and 85 percent processor utilization. Um, yet the uh, frame rate went from 26 to 33. So um, I guess what this means is even if you have a really old processor and a pretty good graphics card, you're still probably going to get a, a nice 30 or 40 percent boost from uh, moving to Vulkan. Right now, obviously, 1150 is in beta. Uh, so if you're brave, you know, you can go try the beta out, but uh, 1150 will be out final, I don't know, in a month or two. 
uh, and then you'll just get notified and, and you'll get the update and boom, you'll be able to run Vulcan. So um, looks like it's going to be an improvement for everybody, which is uh, great to see.